All right, everybody, I hope y'all ready. Get up, make some noise, because it's time to start the Cassandra Show! was filled with relaxation, positive vibes, and maybe a sparkling drink or two. <laughs> now, it's time to dive back into the grind, y'all. Our goals are waiting for us, and they won't achieve themselves. Let's use this fresh start of a Monday as a canvas to paint the beginnings of a fantastic week ahead. TSS Tribe, today's show resonates deeply with those who have weathered storms in their lives when the path ahead seemed shrouded in darkness. But as our guests will reveal, even in the bleakest of moments, there's a glimmer of hope waiting to break through the clouds. So prepare yourselves as we embark on this inspiring journey together. It's time to kick off the show and dive into a story that promises to uplift and enlighten. So y'all go ahead and get all comfy, yeah. grab that bubbly beverage, yeah. uh, and let's get this show started! Let's get it started! Yeah! Yeah! So, y'all, from a difficult journey spanning over two decades entangled in drugs, alcohol, and the judicial system, she emerged as an overcomer. Now, as the first, y'all heard me, mm -hmm. I said the first African-American female commissioner in the town of Dundee, Florida, she's here to share her remarkable story of resilience and redemption. Y'all, please welcome out to the lavender couch, my homegirl, my friend, Miss Mary Richardson! Oh. Please have a seat. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. Yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. Yes. Amen. If I would do it any better, I would be in heaven. Ooh, I like that, that was so good. Yes. Y'all, she said if God would do it any better, she would be in heaven. Yes. yes. I love it. Well, we're glad that you are here, and it is heaven on earth to sit here yes, it is. and chat with you. I've known you and your family for yes. ages. Yes. Ages. I didn't even know you were coming today. Yes. So it's such a pleasant surprise because yes. I've been watching you and all the amazing work oh, you're doing really? for. Yes, okay, ma'am. Wow. You know my sister's still living in Dundee. You never know who's watching you. You never know. So it's really good to have you here. So can you take us back to the beginning of your journey? What were some of the early influences or experiences that led you down the path of substance abuse? Well... Um, it all started with childhood. It all started with childhood and mm -hmm. that pain, that rejection, um, that, that um, <clears throat> wanting to be identified, wanting to be loved, and just no identity. And also having a very dysfunctional background. Mm. Very dysfunctional background. So I got caught up in the trap. Wow. I was trapped. For 20 years. 24. Okay, yeah. to be exact. 24 years of drugs and alcohol, 24 wow. years, over two decades of my life, in the judicial system. My prison number, 849006. Wow. You never forget that. No, you don't. You never you forget don't. that. But you put it all behind you. I had to. You had to. Yes. What made you want to change? I, didn't, I never really wanted to be trapped. I never really wanted to be on drugs. Mm. But you want to be a part of the crowd. Correct. Yeah, you want to be a part of the crowd. You want to try to fit in when you don't have an identity, so you, you, know, you become a part of the crowd. And so that first hit was, one, was too many. One too many and a thousand just wasn't enough. I never knew I would be trapped and, because, and it traumatized me. Mm. It traumatized me. I'm sure it did. Yes, I'm it did. I'm sure it did. Yes. So would you describe how your addiction impacted your relationships with family and friends? Tremendously. Tremendously, mm. uh, it was very broken. 
they were helpless wow. because they wanted to help me. But they didn't know how. They didn't know how and they couldn't. Wow. They couldn't. They couldn't. My deliverance, uh, it only came through the sovereignty of God. Come on. Because I went to drug rehab. I went to jail. I went to prison. Mm. I went to the root man, root Trying woman. Trying to get everything off I of went you. Just everywhere somebody help me. Looking for help. Wow. Yeah. And even the system, it failed me. They tried. They do what they do, but they fail me. But the system, what makes the system fail someone when their try is to help? I think because they don't introduce people to the real higher power. Mm. Ooh. They give you an opportunity to choose your higher power. Mm. And so they're not even at liberty in a lot of uh, systems or in a lot of atmospheres, environments. They're not even at liberty to share the name of Jesus. Yes, it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. And he's fortunately, yeah. and he's the I, only, he's our only hope. I'm not over. He's the I'm, only I'm way. Excited. No, yeah. you talking more. You talking yes. enough. <laughs> you can just keep on talking. I love it. Yes, because I'm with you a hundred percent. Right. But I do understand that you know, especially government agencies. Right. They can't say the word. Right. They've taken the Bible out of school. Yes. So it's like the thing that has really been able to keep us as a culture is no longer there. But I also respect that everybody don't believe in God. No, everybody don't believe in God. Matter of fact, I didn't believe in God. There you have it, yeah. there it is. I didn't believe in him. I told a friend of mine when I was at my lowest point um, that there was no God. Wow. Because I cried out to him. And I cried did. out to him so many times. And I felt like, because I wasn't aware of his presence mm. and I didn't know his character, so I did not know he was actually answering me by sending certain people mm. in my path. So you missed but, the signs yes. because you don't know, you didn't know how he moved. No, I did not know his wow. ways. Wow. So, so how did you navigate rebuilding those relationships during your recovery with your family and friends and everyone that you probably isolated during that time? After I gave my life to the Lord, I fell in love with him. Come on. Yeah, I fell in love with him and I sold out. Just like I had all the enthusiasm yes. to serve the devil. You now had, I had the same yes. or even more. More. I had a greater passion because I found out that it was better over on this side. Come on. My mama used to sing a song, over on the Lord's side, side over, over on the Lord's side. side. Come on, on over on the Lord's side. side. Come on over, over on the Lord's side. Come on you now. You better come on the Lord's side. side. You better come on the Lord's side. There's Run. Me. Come on. Don't I, look back. Run. Don't, don't look, look back. back. You better run, child. Don't look back. That's that's the kind of church yes. we went to, the call and response, the strength and the power right. in knowing what he's capable of doing. I right. love that. In what ways did your addiction affect your physical and mental health? Oh, my God. Mary? You want to really talk about that? Yes. Come on. We need on. to talk about that. Yes. Come on. Mentally, I lost my mind. Mm. Yeah. Mentally, I lost my mind. I had no identity. A friend of mine's had a cat, and the cat was named Nikki. And the cat was so pitiful, <laughs> so broken, and she actually named that cat Nikki because I had no identity, mm. stripped of my self-esteem, yes. and I would cry just because people talked about me. Wow. Yeah, so I had, I had no identity. I had no connection at all. Wow. So uh, mentally, it was a challenge traumatized. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I believe it yeah. was. So would you please describe to our viewers the circumstances that led to your involvement with the judicial system and your eventual incarceration? Well, I st well, when you're on drugs and when you're lost and you want to be a part of the crowd, you just get trapped up in it. Yes. You know, so I started shoplifting. Oh, wow. Yeah, I started shoplifting and I started going to jail at age 11. Wow, well, you juvenile, serious? Yes, in the judicial system at age 11. Wait a minute, let's pause for a second. Mm -hmm. When did you start doing drugs? I started doing drugs when I was about 13. My God. Yes. Okay. 13. I got pregnant with my first child when I was 13 as well. And you got pregnant. Yes. So 11 shoplifting, 13 pregnant with your child, and introduced to drugs. Yes. Mm. And I you dropped would, out of school in eighth grade as well. You so. dropped out of school in eighth grade? In the eighth grade. Wow. You're 13 years old. Wow. Dropped out of school you in the eighth to grade. Take the, to have the baby and well, be away just, from I everyone? Just, or I just, you just didn't want to be just in Just rebellion. Wow. Just rebellion. You know, wow. Didn't obey authority at home. I didn't obey authority in the schools. And so I remember the... <laughs> 
Because after I got saved, I went back and apologized to some of these people. I bet you I, yeah, did. I really made them the work Holy for their Ghost money. The will make you do that. <laughs> yes, I made them work for their money. But I remember my teacher, um, he said he was going to whoop me that day. And I said, not today. I quit. And it was, yeah, it was Mr. Wilcox. I say, Stop I it. I remember Mr. Wilcox. You, everybody remember Mr. Wilcox. Is he still around? He is still around. Wow. Yes. And Amazing. we thought he was the meanest person. We did. Yes. But when you get to know him when you get older, right. you realize he was just looking out for yeah. all of us, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. And he's amazed at my salvation. He's amazed at the turnaround. I bet he is. That took place, yeah. I bet he is. Yeah. Only God can. Yeah, so, so please, uh, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced while incarcerated? We have just a little bit of time before we go to break, but I would love for you to answer this question. Um, not wanting to be there. Mm. Not wanting to be there. And each time I said I wasn't going back, and I had every intention. That's why I have such a big heart for people that are incarcerated. Yes. Because they have no idea how to deal with the warfare. They have no idea what they're facing. Right. And truly in their heart, they don't want to go back. And I didn't want to go back, but I did not know how to stay out. So what happened in the midst of that, I developed a behavior mm. called learn helplessness because I felt helpless. Yes, I yes. know that psychological And every time, I, yeah, every time I went to jail, my parents, they always came and got me out. But this time when I was on probation, I violated mm. and they couldn't come and get me out. Ooh. So it didn't matter how much my bond was, my daddy would always tell my mother, go get her. Right. But this time, they couldn't get me. They couldn't get you out. They couldn't move me. Well, we would love to talk more about that when we come back. We're going to okay. take a short break. We'll be right back. I'm here with the one and only Miss Mary. Okay, no problem. I thought I heard her. We have everything in here. This is our producer. Sandra show. Listen, y'all, I am sitting here with Miss Mary Richardson, and we're talking about her life and how she's navigated through so many challenges, how she overcame drugs, being in jail, all of those things. And one of the things that she shared with us before we went to break is about people who are incarcerated, the heart she has for them, and them not understanding how to deal with the warfare. Would you please elaborate a little bit more on how incarcerated people can deal with their situation better. 
The only, um, the only advice that I can give them is to continue to call on the name of Jesus. Mm. There's continue. power. Yeah, there's power in his name. Yes. And so that was my outlet. That was my exodus. Because like I say, after going everywhere, nothing helped me. And I after being you. in that system for over 24 years, my goodness. you know, in and out, in and out, I even end up at Lower State Prison. You know, yeah, 849006, eight, that's my prison, was my prison that number. That was your prison number. Yeah, that was my identity. Wow. Now, with you going through all of that, how did your experience in the prison system shape your views on criminal justice reform? My views um, was shaped on criminal justice form, reform as um, they need to get, they need to interact more. Mm. Even though they have faith base, mm -hmm. they have faith base, um, I think they need to get a little bit more involved in a little bit more detail, mm. maybe in the history of some of those people to cause them to know why they're doing what they're doing. Mm. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 8, a wise man, he seeks to understand himself, yes. but a fool refused to face the fact. Ooh. And even though they're not wise at that time, but still, if they can get to the root of some of those issues, yes. yeah, you can lay the axe to that. Ooh. And do they have psychological help for them in the prison system, or it's not deep enough for you? It's not deep enough. I mean, they just put them on meds. You know, um, of course, they address the issues. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, when they're on that med, it's just like they're in another world. Wow. Yeah. Now, you say you were in the system for 24 years. Mm -hmm. That's really difficult, and that's a long time. Not, at, not at one time, but yeah, th overall. Uh, throughout yeah. the 24 years, mm -hmm. you were in and out. Thank you for clarifying right. that. How did you cope with the stigma and societal judgment associated with being incarcerated, both during your time in prison and when you got out? Well, during the time that I was trapped, of course, it emotionally uh, affected me. Mm. I dealt with a, a lot of embarrassment, mm -hmm. a lot of shame, mm -hmm. a lot of guilt. So I had those emotions. I was on that emotional roller coaster, yes. and especially no identity, not knowing who you are. So when you don't know who you are, you allow everybody else to tell you who you are. Right. And they begin to shape you and form you that image mm -hmm. because you don't know who you are. Correct. But once I found out who I was, it and was whose a, you were. It was a wrap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a wrap. Game over. No limitations. I oh, mean, I love I'm it. I'm just all in, and, and I mean, I just don't put any restrictions on God. I mean, because or what you're capable of doing through none, Him. None of it. Let me tell y'all. She is, as I said when I introduced, the first African-American female yes. or woman of color to hold the commissioner's seat four in the town of Dundee, Dundee, Florida. How does it feel to have achieved such a significant milestone? Can I just add over 100 years? Can you please yes, just add? Yes. It's been 100 years that Dundee has 100 been? 100 years that Dundee has been in existence. Wow. And there has never. Ever. 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 And I can't go to Polk County without yes. going to Dundee. Yes. It's just a part of my yes. life. I had no idea. And I've never seen a black woman yes. in the seat. In but the seat, but I'm there. Won't God do it? I'm there. Seat number You four. remind me of a Mandela. What you say? The female Mandela been <laughs> in and out of prison doing all kinds of yes. stuff and come out yes. powerful. Yes. And the thing about it is it was already predestined. Mm. It was predestined. So my emotions were... Um, when it happened, the song, I think it was Tasha Cobb, mm. he waited on me. Yes, I love that. He waited on me, and he waited patiently mm. on me when everything else was against me, when the world was against me, even when I was against myself. But I've always had this passion for government. Mm -hmm. even, before I dropped I out, yeah, even before I dropped out of school, I had this passion for government. Mm. And during my journey, um, in the midst of being trapped, I still had this passion for government. Mm -hmm. And I would always say, I believe if I had not went down that path, that I probably would have been in one of the highest judicial systems in the world. Wow. Not knowing, because I've always had this passion for government, and I'm very nosy. So I like, <laughs> I like to dig- Is that what it takes? Yeah, I like to dig into the laws, and yes. you know, I like to see why this is happening, and why is this happening, yes. you know, and so even God's word, when he gave Moses the law, when Israel came out, mm -hmm. they wasn't a nation. His, his word shaped them into being a nation. Amen. So I was always very, very inquisitive. And so now when the opportunity come, and I would always look and I'm like, Lord, you know, people are getting drafted in football. They get drafted in, in you know, all kind of sports. When are you going to draft somebody in the kingdom of God? Wow. And I would always say, um, he would just tell me, wait, you, your, your time is coming. Mm. You know, but you hear it. 
you know, but you just don't perceive it at that time, not to this And magnitude. it may seem long to us, yeah. to you, but they so say the to him, it's just... Yeah. yeah, so the opportunity came, and um, I had the opportunity to run. It was during COVID at that time, mm -hmm. and I had the opportunity. But I would always go to the town hall meetings. I would go to town hall meetings, uh, different um, commissioners, different elected officials mm -hmm. would call me from different cities to come and actually pray wow. at their meetings. That's amazing. Sometimes they would be going through warfare. They would call me to pray mm -hmm. because they knew God had endowed me with all this power now. Come that on. same power I was using for the devil. I got it now over here. Yes. And so um, when the opportunity came, I ran for office. I had no idea I was going to win. Don't even know why I did it. <laughs> I love nobody's it. gonna nobody's gonna vote for me. Right. You know, this is Nick. Everybody know Nick, because you know in your hometown. Mm -hmm. People never forget where you come from. It's so true. And they always want to remember that moment. And I'm like, nobody's gonna vote for me. And I won with the landslide. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Yes, I won with you the landslide. You underestimated who you truly I did. are. I really, really did. I love it. Yes. I'm so proud of you. When I heard of that, I was yeah. like, yes. Seat number four. Seat four. In government. In government. Yes. You. Yes, the same town that I used to destroy because I was one of the You're biggest drug dealers. Yes. I was one of the biggest drug dealers there. As a matter of fact, I pioneered drugs in our region. You stop. Yeah. So even when I was arrested, even law enforcement, I made them work for their money too as well. So I had to go back and apologize to them. Aww. But once I gave my life to the Lord, they wanted to the newspaper wanted to do articles on my life story. So they would go in and they would um, actually investigate and interview some of the law enforcement officers that I had interactions with. Really? And one of them was Gary Hester. He was over SID at that time, mm -hmm. uh, special investigation. Mm -hmm. And he gave this statement. He said, if Mary came out, it gives the ridge a glimmer of hope Aww. because they knew the impact and the influence that I had on that region, that territory. Yes. So now that territory belongs, belongs. to God. Yes. Come on yeah, now. It belongs to God I now, love so. it. You're giving me goosebumps. Yeah. So your ladder is always better than Come your former. Come on. And the last will be the first. Yes. Come on. And so you're gonna stop in here today. You can't help don't it. You play with us. <laughs> so look, you know Proverbs 6 and 30 and 31, it say, don't despise a thief when he's still when he's hungry. But once Ooh. he's found out, you can make him give you your seven folds back. So he got to give it back oh. with restitution. So you're giving it back. Oh, I'm taking it back. You, oh, taking it back. Mm. She taking told. It. Taking it. Yeah. Mm. I yes. love it. I yes. love it. So can you tell us, how do you hope your story will inspire other, inspire other people, especially those who may be struggling with similar challenges or facing adversity in their lives? I want to encourage them that this, this thing was predestined. Mm. See, the Bible say before we was even formed mm. in our mother's womb, yes. there was already a prophetic word yes. that was spoken over our life. Yes. And so Jeremiah 1 and 12 say he watches over his word to perform it. Mm. So I want to encourage anybody that's looking at this show to let them know that your past does not dictate your future, but God would turn that pain into purpose. He would turn that pain into purpose and he would get all the glory out of our lives. Mm. And it's just, it's the latter shall be better than our former. Yes. So let no obstacles, do not let any obstacles hinder you or keep you from doing what he wants you to do. Let your passion, because see, your passion will cause you to over, overpower mm. any obstacle it's that will so come true. your way. That's yeah. how powerful passion yeah. is to fulfill yes. purpose. Can you tell us what advice would you give? I mean, you know young people, are they're going through such a challenging time right very, now. Very, very challenging. And like you said, in the government or in certain institutions, you're not allowed to say or talk about the word of God. What, in, what kind of advice would you give young people who want to, to um, be baptized and rededicate their life or even dedicate their life? I would tell them to keep calling on the name of Jesus. Mm. I don't have any other advice to give anybody Except. because like I say, every system failed me. Mm. And so when I had the encounter with him that night in my bedroom, Valentine's night, 1993, mm. and when he came in, and I mean, it was a wrap. And so after everything else failed me, mm. the infallible, incorruptible word of God was the only thing that was able to save me. Yes. And so when I, I tell people, I don't have anything else. I mean, I wish I can, sometimes you wish you can tell people something else because it seems like they're so far away, but I don't have anything else to tell anybody. Except call. Call. On the, on the and name. never stop. And don't stop. Never stop. There is because he knows how to break through. 
Mm. Yeah. Not using his name in vain because I think so many times we can say the name, but we say it the wrong way. They need to say it knowing that he can come in and change. They may not know that because I didn't know it. But even though I was calling on him mm -hmm. because I saw other people, I mean, you know, the Bible said we're living epistles. I even remember one day I went to uh, town and mm -hmm. your mother, she gave me a ride to Haines City. And I tried to light my cigarette in her car. Mm -mm. And she said, baby, she said, uh -uh. you can't smoke in my car. You know, that, that, was, was, a, that, was, a, that was a witness. <laughs> yes. But yes. she still did not uh, reject me or she still did no, not deny me a ride. Never. Yeah. I'll give you a ride. She would. But yes. you can't smoke in my car. Yes. Yes. You know, so that was Jesus right there. Yes. That was that was a form of Jesus you right there. You could see Jesus in Yeah, her. you could you see could him. You could feel him. And you could demonstrate it. Yes. She, she demonstrated it. She so did. that was a form I of... I miss her so yeah. much. I miss my dad yeah. so much. You mentioned my father as well in the back. It's a, it's a blessing to reconnect with you. I'm yes. so proud of you and where you are in your life. May God continue to bless you. To our viewers, thank y'all so much. We got to go for now. We'll be back tomorrow. Miss Mary with you. Get out of here. Thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Everybody at home, just scan hey. that QR code hey. at the bottom hey. of your screen. Because we got so much more exclusive content for you and more guests just like this right here only on the Sasanda Show. Thank y'all for tuning in and spending some time with us on the beautiful Comarosa set. And until next time, we'll catch you on the Sasanda Show.